So while at first blush this looks really nice, once you actually lay it out to the studio scale, it's definitely fallen a little short. Which is probably to be expected, I suppose. These figures aren't 1 24th. So I've got these engines lined up pretty close. There's a straight line. So immediately, you can see that they're already losing space pretty much in the droid well. The cockpit itself, well, let's just say that one fits inside the proper one. And of course, that nose ends just about where this nose begins. So unless you've got the two, three hundred dollars to get yourself a studio scale model, have the skills to build it as the studio scale model, this is going to be as close as you get to what's out there. Unless you go for like the EFX or Master Replicas X-Wing if they have one. I don't know. That would definitely be much closer to this. But for a toy, this is pretty gosh darn nice, I gotta say. As to the details, well... Those are definitely another major compromise too. The cockpit is distinctly off or undetailed rather. Really no details on the front here. And this cockpit itself is also something of a compromise. It's definitely not accurate. There is a more accurate one out there for the 124th scale uh, model but the lack of detail overall. Like I say, it's probably good enough for a kid's imagination, but if you're looking for the real details, Hasbro definitely does not hold up. Another place that's significantly different here is the droid trench. Now Hasbro is much wider. While they certainly get the flavor of it, it's definitely not there. Even some of the pieces, like uh, those two, two little circles there, they definitely wanted to uh, shoot for uh, a goal. They definitely came up pretty good. But, again, being a toy, it's not really going to be there at all. The profile. Just eyeballing it right here, the profile looks really good. Placement certainly seems to be accurate. As far as the scribed panel lines, well, those could pretty much be anywhere. Again, this was cast off of pyro models, so it's not necessarily completely accurate to any given X-Wing, and they were all slightly different from each other. But, I think the scribed lines, you can definitely uh, give a pass on those. However, I will say they are definitely soft and toy-like on the toy, which, again, is to be expected. Let's take a look at the wings in the engine area. But given that the actual studio scale model is longer, it makes sense that the guns would be longer as well. The details are definitely a little different. To me, the toy actually feels more accurate in uh, this area here. I may not be seeing a particular piece in my collection here for this area and the way that connects. So that's a possibility. The detail on the end here feels more correct to me on the toy than it does on there, but again, there could be a small piece in this batch here that I'm just not seeing offhand. But the detail here, that's definitely different there. Far less radiators on the studio scale than on here, and again, I don't know which is accurate offhand. The wing itself is pretty close to full size. awful awful close and I'd actually say this wing is pretty much dead on as to the underside detail well that definitely has some liberties taken with it for the toy this is a little flimsy it's made of a soft kind of plastic that definitely bends a lot and if I were to accuratize the toy as much as possible I'd probably put a brass sheet in here put these details on the inside and then put the brass over that one thing I'll definitely give Hasbro credit for is going for all the details on the inner engines there. Whether it's exactly accurate or not, I couldn't really say without getting into the reference photos. And then again, it's going to be a little different for every X-Wing you look at. But they definitely made a go at that, which was a nice touch. The engines themselves, well, yeah, that's massively different. 
So obviously Hasbro would have had to have made a lot of compromises here. This is definitely, obviously this piece isn't completely attached the way it should be, but you definitely get the idea of what's going on there. And if you take a look at the backs of these engines, that's just a huge difference. You could basically fit the toy engine inside of this one and still have some room, I think. For what it is and what they went for and what they were trying to do, definitely got to give them credit for that. Let's get the back of the ship here while we're looking at this area. And again, they pretty much got the flavor correct, which is a nice thing of them to have done. It certainly beats the hell out of the Kenner toy that we had as kids back in the 70s. So is that it? I think it might be. I don't want to get into too many of these small details here. I'll pull the engine can apart for one other look. So if we just compare these two pieces, and again the studio scale is a lot, little longer and a little bigger, but that's just definitely a huge difference going on there. And the uh, engine can itself, as you can see here, the toy fits inside the studio scale model very easily with a lot of room to spare. And I think one of the last details we'll look at is inside the engines themselves. There's definitely a lot of detail in there, I'll give them credit on that. But I don't know that there really was any detail in there, it was so dark. I'll have to check some reference photos. We'll go and take a look at that next for the paint job.